This could be a mutton. This is a good fish pick. Hey guys, what's going on? So Victor and I are out here fishing and we are working a kite with two lines and we got two flat lines over here and one bottom bait. And I, I've been fishing the kites all day and I just asked, asked Victor to switch with me. <laughs> and his bottom rod just went off. And it's a good fish. It had a ballyhoo. Had, was it a live or dead ballyhoo? Live ballyhoo. Live ballyhoo on bottom. In the rod holder. In the rod holder and I saw the bite and I grabbed the rod. And it feels like a good fish. We're about to find out what it is. Please. It's, I think it's please a Please be a keeper mutton. It's a mutton. It's a mutton and it's not keeper. Come on. Okay, we're letting you go, you little loser. They're so pretty. Well, I saw this rod get a bite and I ran over to grab it and it was stuck in a rock. And so I was trying to break it off and I couldn't and Victor came over to break it off and rip the fish out of, I guess, a rock. Oh, we lost the weight. That's what happened. Oh. The weight broke off. It's a mutton. It's like the same size as the last one. Oh, he's a little bigger. Should we measure him? Measure, measure him, yeah, him? measure him. Where's your measuring? Right here. Ooh, he might be legal. Please be legal. Please be legal for Brooke. <gasps> he's so close. I need the other measure. He's legal. Yeah? Yeah, he's legal. He's over the 18. Good job, babe. <laughs> He's 19 inches. <laughs> they have to be 18 inches to keep. So I was watching this rod and um, it was bouncing a little bit and all of a sudden I seen it get a bite. I went to grab it and I was like, oh, it's just stuck on bottom. And I was like, I think there's a fish on there too though. Like maybe he brought us into a rock, but we're fishing kind of heavy stuff and I couldn't break it off because I was trying to break it off thinking that we were just stuck in a rock. And then I had to have Victor come over to try to <laughs> break it off for me. And he actually ended up getting the fish out of the rock, but the weight broke off and we caught a 19 inch keeper mutton. There we go, baby. Hey. Woohoo! So this is actually the third mutton of the day. Victor caught one, I caught two. Victor's was small, Mine, my first one was small. This guy is 19 inches. They have to be 18 to keep, so he's a nice keeper. And look at that color. He's been on the boat now for a couple minutes and he is so beautiful. Pinks and reds and oranges and yellows. And they got this gorgeous blue line on their head. They're just a really beautiful fish and they taste absolutely delicious. So he's going in the cooler and he's gonna be dinner. All right guys, so as I was saying, I'm fishing kites on this side and Victor was working the flat lines and basically all day long I've been working this kite and I haven't had one bite on it all day. The only interesting thing I had all day was a big dusky shark came up to under my ballyhoo and I quickly reeled it up so that it was like flying above his head so that he wouldn't eat it. But besides that we haven't had any action on this kite all day long and the only action we've been having is on the other side of the boat with the flat lines and the bottom line. Now with fishing a kite, you can have baits on both sides of the boat. So today we're starting our drift in 250 feet of water and we are drifting in towards shore. So with the flat lines, they are on the port side of the boat and they are drifting east. As we blow in, they go that way. Now with the kite line, the kite goes with the wind so that we have baits on this side as well as baits on that side. So it kind of doubles the amount of baits that you can have in the water instead of usually just having the baits on one side of the boat, you can have baits on both sides of the boat. Which, you know, normally is increases the amount of bites that you get, but on a day like today, the kite hasn't had any action, so. And the funny thing is, tw the two times I caught those two muttons, I had switched with Victor and I was like, Victor, come watch the kite lines for a little bit. And I went to watch these rods for like a minute and both of them went off. So technically, Vic, I think those muttons were yours. I'll give them to you. If you cook them for me, they're yours. 
We got Brookie on, but we don't know what it is. Another fish on the bottom rod. We haven't caught anything else in quite some time. Nope. Earlier, Victor caught. Ooh. Earlier, Victor caught a sailfish, and we had doubled up on sailfish, and then he got a kingfish. A couple of king bites. And a couple king bites on the flat lines. It's, it's yeah. nice. Yeah. It's definitely bigger than the last mutton. Not saying it's a mutton yet, but it's kind of fighting like a shark. Uh, and we've caught one basically every single trip. I see color. Shark. You know that? Long. It doesn't look like a shark. You want to do you this part? Help me? Barracuda. Barracuda. Barracuda, all the way down there. A little one. Man, we're catching all the toothy critters on with that wire today, aren't we? I'll be honest, that Kuda fought really good for his size. He's just a little guy and he fought real good. I'm gonna let him go. See ya. <laughs> All right guys, welcome back to the filet table. Now I only have this one mutton to clean, but he's going to be delicious and I'm going to cook him on the half shell. So I'm not skinning him today, but the first thing I'm going to do is make a head cut and as you can see, this guy's stomach is really blown up. When you're bringing them up fast, their air bladder doesn't have time to compensate for the pressure difference. And so their air bladder fills with air and it doesn't have time to decompress fast enough. So a lot of times when you bring these fish to the surface, their stomachs are blown up and you need to pop them so that they can go back down safely or else they'll float on the water. So I'm thinking when I make this cut, you're gonna hear this stomach pop and go back down from you know, cutting his stomach open and releasing that air. Start with the head, come down here. If you come close, Vic, I think we'll be able to hear it. You, there, did you hear it? Yep. And you see it, it went down, now he's not all puffed up and exploded full of air. Okay, so I made that first cut. Now we're going to take our knife and work our way down from the head towards the tail. This guy is still so pretty, isn't he? I think out of all the snapper, they're my favorite one. So pretty. Now we're taking our knife and lifting up and just working down the bones. You know, a lot of fish lose their color when they die too, but these just, they, I just feel like they get even better looking. I think, I think they do too. A lot of times when you bring muttons up, they're gray and ugly. But I also kind of think it depends on where you're catching them. Exactly. But this guy is very pretty. And I also think it depends on their age. Most of the big ones we catch, aren't they really gray, Vic? Yeah, uh, I would say they're big and pink. I don't know. I think, I think it, water depth is a big thing. When you catch them on the flats, they tend to be that green, pink. Okay. So there is our first side. And I had made the cut here, and then as I was going over these um, rib cage bones, there's no meat on top of the rib cage bones, so I didn't really need to cut all the way to there because I'm not taking this anyways. This is all bone right here. So that's why I left that there. Okay, so there's that. Now I'm going to flip him over and do the same thing on this side. It's a good thing we got our fishing in yesterday because it is blowing today. 
It's blowing, I don't know, what, 25 knots right now? Easy. 20, 20 to 30 knots all day. There's our second side. I feel like the second side of fish is always harder than the first side, but still did pretty good. Missed a little tiny bit of meat by the um, backbone right there, but besides that, pretty good. Let's see if he has anything in his stomach. Nope. Nope, completely empty. Which you would have thought his stomach was full based on the fact that he was so blown up, but it was air, not anything in his stomach. I'm going to pop his eyes and throw him in so that he doesn't float. If you don't pop his eyes, they have the chance of floating. And there we go. It's super, super shallow today. It's like not even a foot deep right here. And it's another one of those days when where there's no fish around. Full moon. No catfish, no snapper. I see one snapper down there. Like I said, I'm going to be cooking these on the half shell, which means I'm leaving them on the skin. But I just want to make sure that I didn't leave any weird stuff on there from the stomach. So I'm just going to touch it up a little bit. Put that little bit off. Cut this little bit off. And then they also have pin bones right here. Where I'm going to cut them out, but I'm not going through the skin. So cut on both sides of that and then cut them out just like that. This has bone in it. See that? I got pin bones. Okay. So there's one. There's two. Now that is going to be Victor and I's dinner. I think tomorrow. tomorrow. Not tonight, but tomorrow. So I will meet you guys back in the kitchen to cook them up. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. So tonight I am grilling my mutton on the half shell as well as grilling some asparagus. So for my seasonings, I'm going to just do some salt and pepper on my fish. A little bit of salt because I'm actually gonna be doing celery salt as well. So I only want a little bit of this. Pepper. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with celery salt, if you like celery and you like salt, then you're gonna <laughs> like celery salt. It's actually kind of a new thing for us in the kitchen and it's very, very good. If you are a Bloody Mary person, celery salt is for you. I'm not a Bloody Mary person, but that's how I found out about it. Next thing, garlic powder. These fillets look so beautiful. After I took it out of the refrigerator, I rinsed them off, but there's a scale right here. You always wanna to try to make sure you get the scales off your meat because you don't wanna end up eating the scales. You're not gonna eat the skin because you're not there are scales on it, so you're not gonna be eating that part. So you don't want any scales on your actual fish. And then lastly, paprika. Before I season my asparagus, I'm going to go straight outside and put this on first because this will take longer than the asparagus will. So let's head outside. So this is Victor's new smoker grill. Is that how you would describe it? Sure, it does both. <laughs> and this is the first time I'm using it. He's used it a lot to cook a bunch of different things, but this is the first time I'm actually using it. set at 400 degrees
close it up and go season our asparagus. Okay. Now for my asparagus, I'm going to pour on some avocado oil and then just do some salt and pepper. grilled asparagus before. I've only ever baked it before, so we'll see how this goes. I'm sure it'll be good though. Okay, now I'm gonna just take my hand and roll them. We'll attempt to roll them. <laughs> They're not perfectly round. They're not, are they? They're they, not. Don't, they don't really like to roll around. We're gonna make them roll. Oh, I broke one. Okay. Honestly, I have no idea how long these are gonna take. So I think I'm gonna put them on the grill right now. Ooh, it's gonna cook fast, huh? slowly pour over. like 
Mm -hmm. Worked into the fish too. Yeah. And any remaining juice you have from the lemon, you just squeeze with your fork and it seeps in. Mm. I really like eating fish this way. And this is so like Brooke's good. specialty. I love fish on the half shell. Mm -hmm. And mutton is like the perfect fish to do it with. Yep. You've done it with redfish. Mm -hmm. With mutton. It's just so good. Your fish tastes so juicy. Um, you have this nice little presentation. It looks good. And mutton is just such a good fish. There's a reason we spend so much time. Try literally, yeah. We'll literally go through four or five undersized muttons. Not to say we're the best mutton fishermen in the world, but that's why we spend all day trying to catch them because they're so good. Definitely my like top five eating fish of all time. So good. Mm, so asparagus is really good too. Even the bloodline is just delicious. Very good. I know your dad's at home. If he's watching this video, he's probably so jealous. This is Brooke's dad's probably favorite fish and then favorite way to eat fish. Yeah. Sorry, Dad. I didn't catch enough. Or a big enough one. Anybody wondering at home, that skin, it's like a little cast iron skillet yeah. for your um, for your fish. You don't taste the scales at all. Any, at, at all. It doesn't penetrate through. It's perfect. Your fish just like comes right off of it. It's so nice. Mm -hmm. It doesn't stick like at all or anything. I could easily, if we got two of these, I could eat two of those myself. It's so good. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. You know, we went out fishing for quite some time and the only fish we brought home was one mutton, but it was really good. We had a great dinner and we had fun fishing. That's and we caught a sailfish, so that was fun too. We did. We had an eventful day. Yeah, it was fun. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. See ya.